Prior to the release of Control, it was predicted that the newest title from Remedy would set up a shared universe. Now that AWE, the first of the planned crossover events, has concluded, we have an idea of where exactly the story will be going. Let us explore some plot threads that were unresolved and brainstorm possible paths that the story may take moving forward. Even though there are many avenues we can go down, I will be focusing on the four main things that jumped out to me while playing AWE. Considering the promotion for this expansion was centered around its connection to Alan Wake, I feel it's best we start there. The plot of AWE focused on Alan reaching out to Jesse with a distress call while filling in the blanks between Alan Wake and Control. By the end scene, a new AWE alert sounds for an event in Bright Falls, Washington. As Langston mentions, the weird thing about the alert is it occurs a couple years in the future. This is an obvious tease for Alan Wake 2. Based upon other information, we can even guess at some of the details. For starters, it is stated multiple times that an Agent Estevez is the agent in charge of the Cauldron Lake Monitoring Station, so it is a safe bet that this character will be involved. The next interesting part is that it is next to confirmed that Ati will appear in Bright Falls to participate in the plot. If Jesse completes all of the Ati side quests, she receives a postcard from him that confirms he is vacationing in Watery, Washington. Back in Alan Wake, the Night Owl, Pat Main, mentions this town in passing. Well, we're expecting a record crowd from the neighboring counties. Naturally, we hope to break the record set by last year's Moose Fest in our neighboring town, Watery. Ladies and gentlemen, At the time, this was a throwaway line about a rival town's event that competes with Deerfest. However, Ati deciding to take a vacation in a town right next to Bright Falls is no coincidence. Whether his being there is intentional or accidental, his location could come in handy when the time comes. For this second topic, it will require us to put on our tinfoil hats as there are only mild allusions to this. During the Fromaro AWE, an entity of unknown origin appeared within the Apollo 14 command module. Named Fra, the entity was brought back for examination and later contained in the investigation sector. Keeping this in mind, let's look at the Sterling and Willow AWE. To quote from the Sterling supplement, local witnesses report a bright flash in the field at approximately redacted. No noise accompanied the light. The object is a hollow sphere made of a stone-like material. Structural analysis of the material does not redacted redacted on record. The sphere has a broken portion as if something redacted from the object. Based upon the context, we can guess at the redacted phrases. What happened was a large spherical stone materialized in the field with a bright light that caused no sound. A portion of the hollow object broke off and some unknown entity inside escaped. This entity cannot be accounted for. The stone-like material does not match any element known to man and is presumed not native to Earth. During the Sterling AWE, a family dog was reported missing. Moving over to the Willow AWE, a similar object was recovered along with vitrified soil, the remains of a canine, a rusted metal bucket, wallet, and an aged shotgun cartridge. Vitrified soil is the material that is generated by heating the soil to a high temperature and rapidly cooling. This is sometimes witnessed with lightning strikes. Based upon information in the approved terminology reminder, as well as comments by Tomasi about the successful disinformation campaign surrounding the Willow AWE, it is presumed that a similar entity of unknown origin crawled out of this stone as well. This time, when it escaped, it killed several people. Tomasi and the Bureau were able to convince the residents that the deaths were as a result of migrating polar bears. There is some connection between the two objects, as the canine remains are likely the missing dog from Sterling. Granted, with one being in Colorado and the other in Alaska, this poses some interesting questions. Based upon the Fermaro, Sterling, and Willow AWE, as well as confirmation that the Bureau has a working relationship with NASA, I have a tinfoil hat theory that at some point in the future, space exploration in the Remedyverse may be a thing. Even Jesse comments, so aliens are real when returning to the Apollo 14 module. If this is a setup for a future plotline, this will certainly take us to the final frontier.
Moving on, I believe there is a fair bit of evidence that in the future we may come across some of these paracriminal organizations that were mentioned. The Eagle Limited AWE was caused by one of these groups. One of the perpetrators ended up being brought back to the Bureau for interrogation. Agent Guthrie, interrogation 4C pertaining to the Eagle Limited incident and its subsequent, um, state alteration. Look, buddy, I have no clue what you're talking about. So you deny being a part of a radical group aiming to affect inanimate objects in a manner that would yield, uh, um, uh, unusual results? After some questionable tactics, he talked about the group he was involved in. In addition, I think it is fair to assume that the individual who reached out to Dr. Hartman in the aftermath of the event at Cauldron Lake Lodge may have been a representative of one of these paracriminal groups. Now that his work has been destroyed, he has no reason to work alone anymore. Unfortunately for him, he was picked up by the Bureau which set him on a new path entirely. The largest connection to these groups is the mention of the Blessed Organization. I won't go over the full details of them as I have already covered them in a previous video. However, we received confirmation that the Bureau was looking into them as well. They are described as displaying a level of skill and caution rarely seen in paracriminal groups. Once the building lockdown has been lifted and the story of control is allowed to move back out into the world, these organizations, specifically the Blessed Ones, may be a source of antagonism moving forward. The final bit of information relates to a single document, but it blows open a huge plot thread that has already been teased by Remedy. During the Keystone inspection, Agent Keenum discovered that the entire population had up and vanished. He relates it to the ordinary AWE. The odd thing is, upon closer examination, he found a symbol of two circles with a dot in the middle marked on various buildings. Luckily, we already know what this is. Within the Ocean View Motel, there are six doors with different symbols. This one here has the very same symbol that Keenum witnessed at Keystone. If we look into the game files, we learn that this door is labeled Vanguard. From here, all we need to do is Google search Vanguard and Remedy for an answer to this. On the Remedy Games website, we learn about Project Vanguard. To quote from the tab, Vanguard is a position at the forefront of new developments or ideas. A small group of people working in an unconventional way with an aim to develop something quickly and independently inside an established organization. Reading further down, the inference we are given is that the Vanguard team somewhat acts independently on a new idea set within the Remedyverse. Its mission is to challenge conventions and to prototype and ship new types of ongoing live multiplayer experiences. If this is what it sounds like, they will be creating a multiplayer experience for Remedy fans that could potentially tie into the main plot. This way, rather than waiting years between each game, we may be looking forward to a trickle of story updates throughout this multiplayer experience that they have planned. At the end of the day, AWE planted the seeds for the future of Remedy moving forward. I will leave this video off with these words, it is a good time to be a Remedy fan.